Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about the Pennsylvania primary results and what they mean for the general election in 2022 and 2024 and beyond. So let's start with the most hotly contested race and most watched, the Pennsylvania Republican Senate primary. Here we had at the beginning, one Trump endorsed candidate and they aren't even in the race anymore. It was Sean Parnell. However, after Sean Parnell was accused of many, many, many terrible things by his estranged wife, now that means that he had to drop out. So Trump was, began looking for a new candidate. And there was a lot of candidates to choose from, among others, Jeff Bartos, McCormick, and suddenly a new name, Dr. Oz. That's because the reality TV star who had previously been from New Jersey jumped into the race and earned Trump's endorsement almost immediately. However, Oz, unlike what was expected to happen, was unable to clear the field. This is because Oz was seen by many Trump voters as a carpetbagger and someone who had moved to Pennsylvania and gotten Trump's endorsement, either without Trump fully understanding who he was endorsing or because somehow Trump had made a bad move. And I am actually from Pennsylvania myself. I live in Montgomery County, which became pretty important pretty quickly on election night. And this is because until the final week of the campaign, it had all seemed like a McCormick and Oz battle between the Trump endorsed Oz and the Republican establishment hedge fund executive McCormick. However, McCormick was also from Trump world. So many people thought if there was going to be a third candidate, they must be some sort of moderate candidate who would clearly say that the election was not rigged, something that neither McCormick or Oz had ever done. And all of a sudden, rising in the last week was Kathy Barnett, the antithesis of what everyone had expected. Kathy Barnett was even more extreme than Oz or McCormick, even further right-wing, even more committed to conspiracy theories, and alleging, among other things, that rejecting... Muslim people and transgender people was just like rejecting Stalin and Hitler. And so many people had only found this out in the last week. So when those last polls came out, it seemed that Oz, McCormick, and Barnett were all headed for a three-way statistical tie with possibly a slight lead for Oz or Barnett, depending on which poll you looked at. And during their very, very early results, we saw McCormick with a lead. McCormick had a lead mostly because the first results were in northern Pennsylvania around and as well as around Harrisburg and Pittsburgh. However, this is mostly because these were McCormick strong suits. And as votes came in from eastern and southern Pennsylvania, Oz strong suits, this is where the race began to become closer. Additionally, vote by mail was a very popular McCormick thing. And the much more densely populated and much more Trump-loving east and south of Pennsylvania suddenly began to turn towards Oz and give him a lead. And when I say Trump-loving eastern and south Pennsylvania, I definitely do not mean Trump-loving east Pennsylvania. This is because eastern Pennsylvania has historically voted Democrat and has only become a swing-ish area in the past few years while Southern Pennsylvania and Northern Pennsylvania tend to vote very Republican, as well as much of Western Pennsylvania. If you look at any general election map for 2022, you'll see Democratic heartlands are concentrated around Pittsburgh, around Harrisburg, around Philadelphia, and out in town, the four major cities. Additionally, there are some in Erie in the far Northwest, but for the most part, there are very few Democrats in the rural areas. And as vote by mail became, came in later, Oz's lead began to disappear. Additionally, Kathy Barnett, who had already known she was not going to win barely any uh, mail-in votes, Kathy Barnett quickly realized she was lost. However, Kathy Barnett won a lot of votes in my home county, Montgomery County, actually being one of the few counties she won. But this should not be mistaken as some sort of, oh, the suburban areas are suddenly going radical Republican. No. That's not what happened. Kathy Barnett was simply just a candidate here previously in 
another general election where she was the Republican nominee. And so, as we saw, Oz quickly had his lead collapse. It never was a very large or insurmountable lead, but it was a lead nonetheless. However, now it is down to just a thousand votes. And most of the outlying votes are in major cities, such as around Pittsburgh and Allegheny County and McCormick Strong Suit, but also in Philadelphia, where Oz way overperformed his actual overall performance statewide. It remains to be seen who will win, and just like on election day, anyone who tells you they know what is going to happen here is completely wrong, because no one can know. More than likely, we are heading for a recount. Moving further towards the left, you see John Fetterman, who absolutely destroyed Connor Lamb, Malcolm Kenyatta. Those other two candidates, Kenyatta and Lamb, were never expected to really win a majority, or even to win at all. However, in going into the last week of the race, everyone had assumed it was for Fetterman until he had a stroke. Then all of a sudden, this stroke threw a wrench into the race. But in the end... Fetterman still won, and Fetterman won in landslides, especially in rural areas, as well as Pittsburgh, which was significant, as it was where Lamb was supposed to, and where he did, do best, because this is Lamb's home county. However, Fetterman also was from out here, and Fetterman is now going to be Pennsylvania Democrats' Senate nominee to take on the winner of Oz versus McCormick. Next, we come to the Pennsylvania Republican governor's race. For most of the race, it had seemed that the contest was between the very far right Doug Mastriano and the slightly, and I do mean slightly more moderate, Lou Barletta, with other candidates expected to generate significant sums of the vote, but not come close to winning. However, in the last week of the campaign, Doug Mastriano pulled away and Trump eventually endorsed him, leading to a a victory. However, he only achieved 44% of the vote, and notably failed to win many votes in much of northeastern Pennsylvania, which, as I had said previously, was starting to become a swing area. Josh Shapiro, the uncontested Democratic nominee for the governor's race, will now face Doug Mastriano. And Josh Shapiro will likely be projected to defeat Mastriano solely due to the fact that Mastriano is so hated by the suburbs. In the suburbs, many voters are more politically moderate, and therefore they're not going to be wanting someone who was trying to help organize the January 6th riot, insurrection, whatever you want to call it, um, and he obviously endorsing the whole stop the steal or big lie idea. This is a similar worry if Oz were to win in the Senate race, where Fetterman is also very popular among Democrats and independents, while Oz, of course, is not popular among independents. Thank you for watching, and I will update more on the other four primaries in North Carolina, Kentucky, Idaho, and Oregon next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.